Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we'll be looking at the Tone Equalizer module. The Dark Table website released an official user manual for the 3.4 version of Dark Table, which is great, except that it puts a spanner in the works for our series because we were following the old manual and the new manual has a different organization. So the modules are not in the same order. We're going to treat that as an opportunity for viewer interaction. If you have a specific module that you would like to have a look at next, please leave it in the comments below and I'll take it into consideration. Luckily, Johan has already suggested the tone equalizer module in one of the comments. I'm more than happy to oblige, so we'll start from there. The Tone Equalizer module divides the photo into nine areas based on luminosity and it allows us to darken or brighten these areas separately while preserving local contrast. We're going to be using this photo to discuss this module. I chose it because it has a high dynamic range and there are some overexposed highlights and underexposed shadows and that should work perfectly for this module. To check that I'm going to first enable the under overexposed indications as you can see and the user manual says that it works perfectly or better with the filmic module so I'm going to enable that module leave it on default we're not discussing the filming RGB module today but just to illustrate the capabilities of the tone equalizer module better. As you can see after enabling filmic there is a big area of underexposed shadows. It didn't change the highlights much. There's there are a little bit more over overexposed highlights but the effect is really visible on the shadows. Let's enable it. So the way the Tone Equalizer module works is that it creates a monochrome mask of the image based on the lightness of the pixels. You can use these sliders to adjust the brightness of the image based on the brightness of the mask. That is, each slider works on the pixels of the mask associated with the mask based on their brightness and then you can adjust those specific pixels associated with this brightness on the mask. Therefore it is essential that we make sure that we have a valid mask before we start working on those pixels i.e. we should check the mask to make sure that it divides the image into regions that correspond to how we want to post process this image or this photo. If we don't do that then we risk adjusting parts of the image without intending to do so. But before getting into masking let's first discuss the simple tab. As the simple tab only divides the image into areas between minus 8 and 0 EV. It allows you to adjust the corresponding pixels from dark shadows to highlights. Pulling the slider to the left darkens that part of the image well, or darkens the part of the image that corresponds to this luminosity and pulling it to the right brightens it. Let's pull the shadows a bit to the right and see if we can recover any. As you can see, it's affecting this part of the image as well. As it's as the mask is not really fine-tuned in the simple tab. You can as well you could as well hover over the area that you want to affect and use your mouse wheel to brighten it or darken it. 
you scroll away from you to brighten and towards you to darken it and you can see while I'm darkening this area you can see the sliders changing here let's reset it the simple tab is a quick and dirty way of using this module it works very well if you have a small part of the image that needs adjustment by the way I could as well recover part of those overexposed highlights as well and you can see the effect in the sliders corresponding to highlights here so it goes from the bottom to the top from highlights towards shadows now let's reset it again and we're going to turn our attention to the advanced and masking tabs which work in tandem the advanced tab has a histogram of the mask not of the image but not but of the mask now the wider the spread the better the definition between the zones and the easier it would be to work on one zone without affecting those next to it as you can see here this mask is pretty bunched up it could be better which means that I'm gonna have difficulties adjusting the shadows without affecting those darker parts of the sky but we can try that you can adjust the image by pulling on these circles points to the left correspond to shadows and points to the right correspond to the highlights so if I wanted to uh, recover some of these highlights as you can see if I hover above the highlights here you can see the line on the histogram to the right and it shows me where those areas fall in my ma on my mask so it's the one to the right at minus one so let's try adjusting these highlights gonna pull it down a bit be careful the image does not dynamically show your changes while you're still adjusting the histogram here you have to release the mouse button to see the effect same way if I hover over these over underexposed shadows I can see that they're at the minus 4 or less yeah it says minus 4.5 and I can see the line over the histogram so let's try brightening this area well that's not easy is it hmm. it affected this part as well and I couldn't recover everything anyway the curve smoothing slider here allows you to change the uh, transitions in the curve if you pull it to the right the transitions between the areas become smoother however if you pull it too far and the manual says more than 0 0.6 so around here it can cause irregularities that's not recommended pulling the slider to the left results in better defined areas but in harsher transitions so let's reset this again and go to the masking tab now the purpose of or the goal of editing the mask is to create as widespread a mask as we can the masking controls allow for the creation of sharp edges between the areas so that the areas can be separately manipulated brightened or darkened while preserving local contrast by having smooth transitions within the areas
to avoid having to keep on switching between these tabs to check the histogram you have a handy bar here that displays 80% of the or the middle 80% of the histogram here so you can check how wide your histogram is just by looking at this tab if an or orange colors appear on this tab it means that you've moved part of the histogram of the edge of the screen the first parameter that we can change is the luminance estimator and you got a choice of about seven uh, algorithms that you can use there isn't any description of what they are or how they work in the manual so I presume that's because we don't need to know what you can do is go through them and see which one gives you the better uh, histogram or the wider range of histogram see that the RGB sum looks good next we have preserve details which is a choice of the algorithm that will be used to smooth the mask let's display the exposure mask to see if uh, we can see any difference the first option is no which does not use any um, algorithm to smooth the mask which means that the effect is the same as us using a tone uh, tone curve you got a distinct areas just shadows and highlights as far as I can see we'll talk about the guided filter next which blurs more the shadows than the highlights more contrast and detail will be preserved in the shadows if you used the guided filter it would help us in our case because we have a lot of underexposed shadows in this photo that we are trying to lighten the next is the averaged guided filter which uh, apparently is a lighter version of the guided filter uh, if you use the guided filter and notice that the effect is too much then you can use the guided the averaged guided filter next we have filter diffusion which is how many times the filter will be run on the mask for the final result the higher the value the more blurred the filter will be as you can clearly see and the less the difference between the uh, zones however it will uh, use up more processing power the smoothing diameter slider controls how much of the surrounding image will be taken into consideration when calculating the mask blur for a particular pixel the result is that if we pull it to the right we get a smoother transition between the dark and light areas of the mask and if you pull it to the left you get harsher transitions the edges refinement and feathering slider works the same as feathering in any other mask whether in dark table or other image editing software it controls how closely the mask will follow the edges or not so lower you will have smoother transitions here on the edges higher values will define the edges more clearly next we have the mask post-processing as we've already discussed this bar shows about 80% of the uh, histogram uh, it drops the lower 10% and the upper 10% next we have mask quantization which according to the manual applies some posterization to the image so to separate the the uh, mask areas even more however by looking at it it seems that you get less posterization the higher the value so i'm not sure where you're supposed to use it it seems to produce the best effect at its lowest as you can see higher values produce a narrower histogram 
The mask exposure compensation allows you to pull the mask to the left or to the right, as you can see. And if we pull it too much to the right, we can see that there are an orange area here, which means that the histogram has been pulled off the edge of the screen. Go back to masking, going to pull back. Notice that uh, if I pull it to the left, the width is decreasing as well. Now clicking on this automatic pipette here would center it, I'll click another time, it will center it around the minus four area, which is the middle. You see that here exactly, it's centered in the middle. Double click on it to reset it again. The mask contrast compensation controls the width of the histogram. So pulling it to the right will increase the width of the histogram. Pulling it to the left will decrease it. The automatic or pipette here is supposed to produce a reasonable starting point. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's based on where it is. So if we, let's reset that. Uh, let's use this one to put it exactly in the middle middle, and see if that produces a better effect. Yeah, it does. Okay, let's reset that completely and discuss the presets. There are several presets that come with the module. They are more or less self-explanatory. isolated objects you can go through them and see if any of them correspond to what you're looking for or at least you can choose one as a starting point if you want to as well and edit it yourself let's reset that again so that's it for uh, this episode uh, I hope that you found it uh, entertaining and informative if you have any uh, questions, corrections or requests, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.